Can I paint my squid army in just one weekend? Yes, well, kind of. Like, with a little bit of cheating. Let me explain. Now, these models were printed at the end of 2022 when I did a video on can I print a Warhammer Battle Force box only using free STLs? If you want to watch that video, you can click over here. And now I wanted to get them painted as I was going to be versing my friend's dwarves and you'll find out what happened with that later on in the video. I did talk about cheating and the first cheat was I was counting Friday night as part of my time. And second cheat was it was actually a long weekend in Australia. And so that's when like the Monday is a public holiday. So it's like a three day weekend. And that's right. If you're paying attention, that public holiday was in June. So I'm filming this in August. You can see the kind of film schedule we've got, but let's, let's get into it. So I got the base pieces done and by that I meant putting like lots of different sands and different size gravel on the bases. I'd never used milli putt before and so I thought this was a good opportunity to give that a go. You've already seen some of my other videos that I have used it but this is my first time using milli putt and basically it's a two-part thing where you mix the two bits and it makes a chemical reaction and then that will slowly harden over time, but it's really good for sculpting, really good for attaching magnets, or in my opinion it is. But basically I use that to kind of blend any of these 3D printed rocks that I was attaching to the bases, particularly on the big squigs. I wanted to have this kind of stalagmite, stalactite vibe, whichever the one's coming from the ground. I can't remember which one's which. To attach the magnets, I, for the squigs bases were a little tricky, like the big ones, because their bases were just flat. I just bought those 3D printed online before I got my filament printer. I needed to drill holes through the bases, but with the squigs attached, it was a little harder. And so I ended up snapping the squigs off the bases so I could make attaching them harder. Did lose a foot in one of those, but you know, that's what happens. And then so after all the rocks, attaching the magnets, we were almost ready and I left some of the areas flat because I wanted that to be where the water would go at the end and you'll see how that comes out. Late Friday evening after I had finished work, I primed all the models brown. <laughs> Okay, so it is day two, morning two. Oh gosh, my hair. We're going to start and get them finished. We had a little mishap here. Gosh, can I hold this right? Yeah, one of them snapped. So we're gonna glue that back together and we'll get on with it. Now you can probably tell from my voice from the videos back then that I was a little sick at the time and you'll see why that's important a little later on. The plan was to play a game, like I said before, against my friend's dwarfs on the Monday, like the long weekend. But unfortunately that didn't happen and so I just had to paint them for fun. Now we did a heavy dry brush of a gray and then followed by a lighter dry brush of a white. It's kind of like my standard cheeky, quick, slap chop method. I then hit them with some speed paint. So like I've only got the 1.0 speed paint. And so we just did some reds for the big guys, yellows for the riders and blues for kind of the riderless squigs. And then I tried to blend the tummies with a different color. So the reds, I did orange, the yellows, I also did orange. And then the, the blues, I did like a purple belly, but you probably won't notice too much of that. I tried to keep the colors overall quite minimum because uh, to because uh, that just helps with speed. You're not changing between too many colors. The metallics, I did a silver dry brush over a gray base coat and some of the other areas like the rings, like the nose rings and stuff, I did bronze. I did a layer of Bugman's Glow for the lips. That was pretty kind of standard. For the cave kind of base areas and the stalagmites, I did a, a gray and then a light dry brush of like a blue gray and then a really light dry brush of kind of this white blue, just to kind of get those layers. For the water, I did a dark green and then a lighter green, just like, so it's basically the dark green with a bit of white mixed in and then a final highlight. And I'm just trying to like imitate wave patterns. So kind of these like squiggly lines in those greens to kind of emulate waves. I then used a hot glue gun to create that water effect. And so I wasn't really too sure if this was gonna work. And this was my first time with a hot glue gun. Didn't realize how cheap they were, but like they're pretty good. You kind of just, yeah, put the glue in, spread it around with like a, I used a wooden skewer. And then you can even kind of like you would with like icing a cupcake or something, use the skewer and like kind of pull it up from the hot glue and get these kind of spikes. It did, however, look a little like slime. So one of my friends thought the, the water I was trying to go for was like the slime coming out of the squeaks, which I thought was kind of cool as well. I think with a lot of practice, this is like an easy way to get some quick water effects. I didn't want to try like liquid resin and stuff like that, just because that just seemed like the messier option. 
Now for the last part of the painting, what I wanted to do was do some OSL. You know, for the, some of the mushrooms I put on the bases, I wanted them to have this kind of luminescent, fungi vibe. And so I went for two colors, a blue and a pink, just to kind of give that contrast. And so what I did was I went and used my airbrush, um, the old Sparmax, and I just kind of, yeah, just like little spritzes, just trying to build that color up. I then, yeah, sprayed some of the squigs and anywhere that that light would be splashing, sometimes on the ground or like the legs and the adjacent parts, just to give the effect that this light is glowing and spreading out. I then went back in with some like highlights on parts and kind of gave them some highlighted edges in that color. And so I think it, it worked all right, like for some of them, like, can I? I wonder if you can actually see it. Like it's it's pretty subtle, particularly the overspray, I think just kind of gives this faint like idea of that. I think in hindsight, I need to brighten up the contrast on the models, but I think for the most part, they turned out pretty well. What do you think of these models? If you want to see the video where I print them, you can click over here. Otherwise there's another hobby video here. Thank you so much for watching and happy hobbying.